Hello, 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 and welcome to the Xenotic Defrag Beginner's Guide. I'm Owens Craven, and this is going to be a guide showing you how to play Xenotic Defrag, which is a racing game mode, also known as CTS, or Complete the Stage. This is a mode where we try to complete stages as fast as possible using various different techniques. This is going to be specifically for the EXE pub servers. If you go into the server browser and search for exe.pub, here they are. There are some race, uh, non-race ones like Duel and Instagib, but we have mainly Hardcore Parkour, Respect the Grind, Hardcore Parkour 2, Relax Running. Hardcore Parkour are very difficult maps, difficult servers um, with longer time limits. Relaxed Running is our standard. This is what I'd recommend for most new players. 20 minutes on the maps, very short, easy to complete maps, just for chilling out. But you can grind, and the same map set is on Respects the Grind, or RTG, which has 90 minute time limits by default. All of these can be increased if you need to. So we'll now go through, starting at the very basic movement tricks that you'll need to get you through almost every map, to then moving on to more advanced tricks that will get you through certain maps that are more difficult, or get you through every map faster and faster, being of course the point of playing Defrag. If you've been playing for a while, you'll probably want to skip ahead to later in the video where we discuss the more in-depth movement techniques. If you have been playing for a very long time, then please do check out the XDF Academy videos, which are a great starting point after this video. If this video teaches you how to play, play for a while, then check out XDF Academy. They're very, very long videos, but they are absolutely worth watching. Go check out the website, xdf.gg little bit of it's up on screen that is where the records are stored uh, every month I take all those records and go through them and commentate over them and check out what's been going on uh, here is our HUD and if you need to set up Xenotic as a base game go to the Xenotic.org website have a look at Xenotic.org forward slash guide and Halogen will take you through everything for that. Some of it is not required for XDF, but is more tailored towards the pew pew side of things, the shooting in Xenotic, but a lot of the basics are there. The first thing I would recommend that you do is you come into settings, uh, game, HUD, enter HUD editor, take this bar here, this is called your strafe HUD, and I'd recommend stretching it out. Oh, oops. stretch it out all the way so it covers the entire screen and pop it up just here under your crosshair this is going to be one of your most important bars in the game having it bigger just means it's easier to see when you're close to the edge of this green we'll talk more about that later so let's go over what are the basic parts of your hud i'm going to hop into this challenge just here you'll see we have the time just here the time remaining in the map, or it could be counting up rather than down. Personal best ever. Server best just here. This will be the best that you've done on this server in this current run. Here we have the buttons that I'm pressing. Health and weapons down here. The speed you are currently going. The gravity uh, g-forces that you're experiencing. Your acceleration or deceleration if it's minus. And over here there'll be a little one for how fast you are going. Just up here, we have the percentage of strafe efficiency, which we will get into a bit later, and your V angle, which is down up, which can be useful for things with rockets and flying around later. So in general movement, you're going to be using WASD. We're going to talk as if it's WASD. I even used ESDF, so don't worry, it gets a bit confusing. You get used to it. But if we talk about W movement, we mean this. Jumping and pressing W and you'll see I'm gaining speed as we go and I can take turns Gentle turns, but I can take turns and I can keep coming around in a corner if I keep moving my mouse smoothly We then have WA or WD which is generally referred to as strafing Which is where we do this and we're looking for the edge of that green bar that comes up not into the purple That's minus but into the green to gain speed as we go then we'll talk about AD turning, which is where you do sharper turns than you can do with a W turn while doing this. While doing W and A or W and D, you are unable to really control your turn. You're sort of just going in a 
you can go a bit turn but a bit turn but not really that much we'll get into more details of that as we go through so now let's hop into this tutorial just here and we're going to start off with circle jumps now these are a difficult thing and we'll get very much into depth with them a little bit later in the video but the basics of them is as you're moving you can press forwards and go at 320 sideways backwards everything you'll go at 320 but if you can turn at the same time to keep your effective speed going at the same the game speeds you up a little bit as you're turning you can see i can get over 400 by spinning like this well in zoonotic if you jump you don't slow down if you just do nothing and jump you'll keep moving at exactly the same speed if you just hold jump so we move we turn we jump we move we turn we jump and we get over with some 550 560 speed you can do this both ways oops it isn't the easiest thing and most people will have a preferred direction but whichever way you do it or whether you come up and over the top like some players do you'll get your rhythm with circle jumps and you'll never stop improving with circle jumps here's the hard section let's see if i can do this backwards absolutely and that is your basic how you're going to start pretty much every run but like i say we'll get into that more in the weeds of it a little bit later once we start talking about putting it all together just like that next up how did i get around those corners so quickly well a d turning so we're going to get a bit of speed off of this uh, purple block and then we're just going to jump an A and D to turn. You'll see I don't gain any actual speed there, but we're going to jump and we're going to A and turn our mouse gently, slowly and smoothly turning your mouse to follow round. We'll go again and we'll go. And one of the key important things with this is that you look where you're traveling before you start doing A and D turning. So if I look off to this direction and this direction and then I turn and it's quite difficult if I'm looking in the wrong direction and then I start turning you'll notice on the uh, bar that I, nothing happens till I get to the green section so I can be doing this and nothing whatsoever is happening I'm not moving anywhere so I need to be moving and making sure that I'm in the right place otherwise I could be losing a lot of speed and might slow down very quickly just like that a and d you'll get the rhythm for it it's a very fluid motion you can go faster you can gain speed by doing it as i'm doing now or you can use it to slow down a little bit if you need to you need to break a little bit but it's a very smooth movement as you come through we go left we go right and you'll see i'm gaining speed and by knowing this track, because I've done it a few times, I can go through very smoothly. Next up, how to gain a lot of speed very quickly. So those last two things where you're just moving with W, you do a bit of a circle jump to gain some speed, and then you use A and D to turn, they'll get you through pretty much every map. But you want to go faster. That's the point of playing this game, after all. Going faster and improving your time. So we'll start off with a circle jump. We'll talk a bit more about what's going to happen down here. We're going to get a bump of speed when we hit this down ramp. Remember that for later. And now we're going to switch left and right. And then we're going to come to this corner. And again, you'll see I straightened up because I was heading this direction and this direction and this direction. But let's talk about just the straight bit for the minute. So we go and we're looking left. We're about to run into the wall. And we look right. We look left. We look right and then I'm going to straighten up into the direction I'm going. It's a very fluid movement. Some people get it naturally as they're uh, learning to play the game. And others will take a little bit of time and they have to think about moving their crosshair. So we're going to go and then if we were to just do that, you see how we lose a lot of speed. So we want to reset our crosshair to the center, to the direction of travel before we start going for those AD movements. So we're going and we're going and we're going and we reset to the center and then we turn. And it's important to be deliberate in your movements when you're doing that. Very deliberate, very smooth as well. There are some people who flick a lot more. You can get quite a lot of a flick from a, a circle jump and you can really 
throw yourself in, but I'd recommend being smooth to start off with and then learning for specific maps how far you can take it. Push it over the edge and then bring it back or go push up to the edge and find that point where you can get to. Next up, we're going to move into some slick. This is infinite slide. So I do nothing and you'll notice that my bar has my strafe bar has now gone blue around the edges. That indicates we're on slick and that we can do crazy things like whoop. So in the same way that we did a circle jump at the start, you can do almost the same motion, but with uh, without holding W and A or W and D, we just hold one of them and we turn and you can almost fly infinitely. It's a very, again, a very smooth motion because otherwise you'll overturn and lose speed just like that. But you can gain a lot of speed from this by being smooth and smoothly going around and then fly off into the distance. And slick is something we'll talk about a lot later, but it's something that comes... It's, it's a very difficult thing to do. A lot of the tricks with slick are similar to the tricks with strafe, though. So you'll be able to pick them both up at the same time and uh, some maps will have little bits of slick within them where you have to do things like this you could have this room you know you come in from a section like we just did and you come through the wall and then you gain a turn of speed and you throw yourself out at the end and continue going at 3000 speed or it could be an entire map made of slick so we'll talk more about slick, but again, it's a smooth process. You don't want to be doing W and A. And if you see this go, the bar go blue, stop jumping because you can go really quite fast with slick. We'll head on to the next stage. We're now in with a little bit of weapons. We'll discuss these briefly, but we'll go into more detail later. This section is just to get you through so that you can know how to complete most maps. The most important weapon is going to be the rocket launcher or the devastator just here. You want to look down, jump and shoot at the same time. And if we do that, we go right up here. If we just shoot, we only go one of these blocks. If we jump and shoot at the right timing, we'll go two. If we come up and do it slightly off the wall and slightly backwards, we can get up here. The angles on this are quite difficult to figure out and you will eventually do it. And you'll also mess up like that and just shoot into nothing quite a lot. Here, we're going to have to shoot off of the wall and then continue on the wall. So gaining a bit of height and then continuing on the wall. The grenade launcher here, the mortar, very similar just gives you a lot less height and is a much smaller amount of uh, ammunition. So we're going to have to do different tricks to do this one. But it fires a lot faster, so you can almost just bounce on it like a, like a pogo stick. Moving up in faster speed, but less projection per shot. We have the Hagar. This is where your vangle comes in, your vertical angle, this number down here. If we look at about 70 degrees or 69, nice. And then we jump and we hold forwards and we go up. And you'll just climb and climb and climb. Now we do that again to gain height. And we look back a little bit and use A and D. It's, it's a difficult thing. It does take a lot of practice to get used to this. And I'm probably going to mess this bit up. You'll also, you'll, you can kind of get away with just riding roofs sometimes. The roof is very high up here, but you can just about get away with riding roofs here the angles are tight you'll learn them as you go it is something all of these weapons will take practice and they come with intuition the final weapon style we've got is the hit scan style weapons this one's shown off with the shotgun but usually it might be the vortex uh, this is where you just shoot a thing and it gives you a little kick boost a little bit of knockback almost as if you've been shot in the regular game by that weapon you'll get some knockback, although it's a lot more. We jump off of here, we shoot this, and we just fly straight over. This is much rarer. You'll see this very often. You'll see this semi-often, that's probably your second most. This one, a lot rarer. Um, it comes in more useful, rather than doing things exactly like the rockets, comes in more useful where you can do this and get a double boost out of it. And then this is quite rare to see the shotgun or the vortex. 
So here's a weapon that you don't see very often, but it's definitely worth knowing about because of a special secondary fire it's got, but we'll get to that in a minute. The primary fire is a very quick plasma ball that does a lot of knockback, sending you absolutely flying away from wherever you shoot it. The general skill with this is just to shoot at walls and to chase backwards, and then somehow remember when you've got to go up and over things. But the secondary fire on this, if you press right click or whatever you've bound alt fire to, is a pull. So if I jump along, look a bit down, and then use the alt fire, I'm going to get pulled along. I can also pull myself up walls with this, which is quite often the thing that it might be used for in uh, certain maps in Xenotic. But it is quite a rare item to see used because it is a difficult weapon to use and yeah it just doesn't see much use which is a shame because it's a fantastic weapon with a really unique mechanic. So hopefully that is a good introduction to rockets. Hopefully that will get you through most maps, through movement, through um, the general movement of the game and of the weapons and if you need more information please do check out the rest of this video and if you need more information than that check out xdf academy on youtube the links are in the description so onwards we go to some expert strafe movement okay so that concludes our uh, basic movement guide now let's move on to some slightly more advanced movement techniques and things that you won't necessarily need to get you through every map but things that can be very useful. We're going to start off, as is always recommended, at the beginning with the circle jumps. Like I said, um, when we were jumping over those gaps, we it, it's very, very in-depth. So a circle jump is simply going in a circle to gain speed and then jumping at the end. So we'll go round and then jump at the end and start strafing straight after. Uh, you might want to just continue doing it on the ground, turning, Maybe do it the other way. Figure out which way you like best. Um, but in general, you want to start 180 degrees to where you're going. Close to the edge. Run round in a circle and jump. And you'll see I got 493. It comes up just below the bar. 506. 516. If you start further away from the start, you'll gain a little bit more speed. Uh, so I'm jumping... So I, if I start here, go forwards to here, I'm then jumping when I get back to here, which gives me a little bit of time to gain some speed uh, just in the air so than if I start just here. Oh, I accidentally started again. It's difficult to see where the lines start sometimes. Jump and through. This is such a difficult thing to get right, and you will take years and years to master it and probably never will. But learning to do it, Sometimes you can uh, do it from a quarter angle. That can be a little bit easier, but it is best to do it as far as possible. 180 degrees is generally the best. Sometimes you'll be enclosed into a tighter space than this or might only have a tiny little platform to do it on, in which case you might need to finesse yourself into a perfect position. So next up, let's talk a little bit about the checkpoint system in Zenotic because it can be confusing to new players. You'll notice as we come across the checkpoint that it's got intermediate one and then a time. And the first one is against my time. Um, you'll see here, intermediate one minus uh, plus 13. So I'm slower by 13 milliseconds. Here I'm slower by 47 and slower by one second and seven milliseconds from malice. The time will be against the best time that you have set to that checkpoint, whether that run immediately hit a wall or whether it was your personal best. And it is versus whoever set the best time. If you only see one time, then you have the best. If you see a green time like that, then you have the best. I just beat Malice's time there. And then I'm slower than Malice, but I'm better than my own because my own time doesn't show up. So I'm currently better than my own best time, but slower than Malice's. And that's not what you want to happen hitting into a wall. So going across the line is 1.6 seconds slower than Malice, but faster than my own personal best, but only in this server and this run. So when the server restarts, it will give me a different time uh, and a different set of splits. Your personal best can be checked. I could not break my 
51st place of 1947. I got a time of 21.58, mostly due to that uh, running into the ledge at the end there. So now let's talk a little bit about double jumps. They're very important on this map, which is uh, Cool Mini 2. So one up from the last map we were talking about, because we want to use a double jump to get over this down here and land into this down ramp to give us some speed. So we'll start with our regular circle jump, just the same as we were before. Come over here, double jump. So we want to hit just before and then jump again. So you'll see I jump just up on top or I can jump right over. It's probably more noticeable if we come around to here and go to here, you'll see I'm not going to be able to jump on top of there. If I double jump, I can make it all the way up, which can make you much smoother getting over, especially these sets of stairs. So we'll do that again. We'll come here, jump, and uh, spacing is something very important here, which can be slightly adjusted. So we want to do a double jump. We're not going to be able to do it off of the back there with that spacing, but we might be able to adjust by starting a little bit earlier. And we could just get the double jump off of that. But realistically, we want to start a little bit earlier, do the circle jump, run round off of here, and then turn with our AD turning, get round this corner, hit a double jump, hit a double jump, and we're up those ramps, uh, up those double jump pads without having to, um, without running straight into them. Because of course, if we just ran straight into those steps, we would lose all of our speed, and that wouldn't be good. Just like that. The next thing we'll talk about, once we've learned double jumps through there, we come to ramp jumps. They're very, very similar. The difference, the key difference between the two, being a double jump off of a step will completely kill your speed if you miss it. So you run straight into the front of it. Whereas a ramp, you can keep your speed and you can jump, but at the same time, if you're to come into this at, a, at the wrong angle, you're either going to gain a lot of height or not. It's quite similar with the uh, with the ledges that you'll get the same ish amount of height. But with ramps, if you start at the bottom and land perfectly here, then you will fling off of this and go right up in the air. Whereas if you jump and land on the front, you see how I lost quite a lot of speed there. You'll lose speed on the landing where you can gain speed coming down just like we did with that ramp there. So to put that all together, we'd want to come over here. I didn't get the double jump there, but that's fine. You don't have to get every trick every time. Um, that's quite a tricky corner, actually. Then we're going to come here, we're going to hit the ramp, and we would want a ton of speed to get over to here. I'm not going to make it, but it uh, can at least cut somewhat of the corner out. And so we'll go again and we go up and ramp jump. So I'm adjusting my spacing by moving that little bit. So watch now as I adjust the spacing just so that I land at the bottom and flick up. And now if we go again, I'll adjust my spacing just a little bit so that we don't quite land at the right point. So that we lose speed. Because, you know, you've got control over that. That wasn't quite what I meant. We can still get away with this one. So if I land here, then I'm just going to eat and lose a load of speed. So there's your ramp jumps and your double jumps. These are key important things in gaining speed or in some cases in getting over anything. At a lot of speed, you're just not going to be able to get through this section without double jumping. But you can do it very smoothly, just like that with double jumps. Keep a lot of speed with a ramp jump. Keep coming around here, another double jump to get across here. You'll see this in a lot of maps. These are kind of core core parts of uh, Xenotic. And here, we're using double jumps to cut out, because otherwise we'd have to zigzag through all those little sections. So you can get double jumps and you'll get the spacing between them. You'll get the tiny micro adjustments that we're always doing to just let off the gas a little bit and not quite strafe as hard as we could. And get round and we want to be, you know, getting round here smoothly and landing past this ridge so that we gain speed on the down ramps. And we're not wanting to lose speed while we're going up ramps. And putting all of that together is a thing that comes with time 
and you will get it. It'll just take some time and it's practice per map. I've played this map a few times before, so I do have that kind of muscle memory and I do have the knowledge of where I should be going. But there'll be new maps where I just completely can't figure them out and it will take me half an hour to figure out new maps quite a lot of the time. So just keep going and you'll get your double jumps and everything in good working order. Just a quick jump over to a different map to show off a side ramp jump, which is where you uh, come up off of the side of a ramp. Just like that, it would mostly be used to do something like this, or potentially you'd use it to flick up and round there. Um, it's quite simple to just turn into the ramp at the last moment. That's quite a normal thing to do. But you also might just need to um, run up and flick, and you can even get up there just like that. If you just need this for cre uh, clearing a bit of a tricky bit of a map, you might be able to get away with just doing something like that, a circle jump off of the ramp or a double jump kind of bump off at the bottom. You might be able to get up, not quite on this one. We require the uh, the other kind. But yeah, just thought I'd drop in here just to show off the side ramps and how they slightly differ. You need to come in with them at a different slight angle. Uh, to send yourself up and over and it's almost like just straightening off the corner just like that So here we are on a full slick map. This is crouton icy uh, Some maps will have multiple versions. So crouton maps have crouton icy crouton rockets crouton strafe crouton haste various different ones and if you ever see uh, Not Turk, that's crouton backwards there's a lot of uh, duplicated maps sometimes in this game. Here we are with a full bit of slick though, and we are going to use that basic slick motion that we remember from earlier, where you just move left and right and left and right, but then we've got to jump, use that double jump to get over things. Coming around here, whoop, don't hit into the wall, we're going to use that ramp jump to flick up here, and not quite get over it. But yep, double jump to get over all of those bits that will stop us. And then a ramp jump to get all the way up here. Jump over here. A double jump will get us up here. Use uh, You'd want to try and keep going more round and get this double jump to get you up all the way on top. Some things can be stepped up just a little bit like this. While you're slicking can just be stepped up. Whereas other things you're going to hit into. So you have to remember when to jump and when it's not required. Because at the speeds you're going while slicking, which can be incredible speeds of over thousands of units a second, 3,000 quite easily, you aren't able to turn while you're in the air. So jumping is not recommended while you are slicking. Here again, we're going to need to either choose our route. We're going to go up here and take these pads or... If we can bring enough speed around this corner, which we should be able to, we can go faster and faster and faster and get all the way over the top, then slalom in and out and in and out and hit it across the line. You'll see there, by the way, that I did just get a better time. That is only on this server, so the two servers aren't linked in terms of their time. That time was a minute and 11 seconds. My personal best is 34 seconds. But we can go again and again until we get our personal best, which is, of course, the point of defrag. There will be many different routes uh, on certain maps like this. And, of course, you've got to match your spacing. You've got to sort everything out in that regard. That was quite nice over there. Quite smooth from me. Here, I want to get on top of here so that I don't lose as much speed. But then I'm going to hit my head. So it is a very difficult thing to work out where you want to go. Slowing down in slick can be an incredible thing. But we'll gain some speed again and we'll just keep going and not quite make it over there. It generally is best to just reset. I think this might be a. Oh no, this isn't a bounce pad. It's a bounce pad in the uh, regular version, in the non slick version. You'll see there that I was bugging inside of this ramp. There is a thing called a slick bug, which I just got there. Completely kills your speed. So going up ramps and down ramps in slick in Xenotic can be uh, a bit of an issue. There are ways to mitigate slick bugs, but they 
are a bit for it -y. so we'll try showing some of those off very late in the video. But that's your basic slickage. Slick can come in all shapes and sizes like we saw on the last map we were playing. You can have slick in the middle of a regularly strafe map. You can also just have a map that is entirely slick. Slick sections are usually denoted by blue if they're in a or an ice texture if they're in a regular map, but some maps are just the full map is what it is. So we'll see if we can get a personal best on this map here. Probably not. Yeah, it looks like I'm not quite going to get to the... Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Ah, that's a true personal best right there. Very nice. So, yeah, quite a lot of slicks uh, tricks are the same as strafe. You're just heading a hell of a lot faster. It is a difficult thing to get your head around and it is all about moving gently because if again if you move too fast you will slow down sometimes you may want that sometimes you may want to come into a corner sometimes you'll hit a wall on purpose all of these things are things that you'll have to learn on a per map basis so definitely spectate other players people are very very helpful in this game on to the next section we're going to be talking more about uh, hard weapon tricks so thank you very much for watching Here we are on Cool Hasta 2 where we're going to take a look at some of the extra features you might find on some maps. So we start off with that circle jump we learned earlier, into a bit of slick, then onto a down ramp. Then this is a velocity pad. Uh, this is a teleporter. So those are the things we're going to take a little bit to touch on right now. So the slick we'll get to a little bit. We've got the down ramp to gain some speed and then a velocity pad if you watch. If I jump off of here, we're going at 420 speed. And we'll continue doing that and we'll bounce just the same height every single time when we come off of this. And it will continue keeping our velocity in whichever direction we point it. So the faster we go through here, the faster we're able to come out. A standard jump pad will reset your speed. The next thing will be a teleporter, which if I go through backwards, is going to reset my position. These could teleport you to completely different places, but this one just takes your speed lets you continue it and turns you around so that you can head back over there so if we put all of that together it should look a little something hopefully i'll be able to get this uh, pulled off because i'm not sure i'm going fast enough but should look a little bit like ah, i didn't make it but if you can't make it if you're not quite going fast enough to get over something like this there's often a little trick of a shortcut always look to the edges of these big velocity pads or jump pads because quite often you can do something like this. See how we can't quite get up here? Can't quite get there. But lovely, cool. Just put this little side bit. So look out for some things in the map geometry that look like they're decorative. But they are actually uh, intended to help you up things. So again, the, the slick down here into head bonk. Then the velocity pad is going to keep our speed. As we come out of the teleporter, it's going to reset our mouse position to straight ahead. Uh, so you will have to adjust for that after you come through teleporters. Some teleporters will lose your speed. Some teleporters are set to a maximum speed. And some teleporters will continue you going along at speed. So now let's take what we've learned from gentle turning and strafing and holding controls and looking away and all of that from strafing. And let's add some rocket propulsion to it. Let's take a look at some ways you can get faster with rockets then. So at the start I showed you how to get over things with rockets and just simply pretty much get up and over any obstacles that you may come across. Uh, if this wasn't here you'd sort of just jump straight over. But here let's have a look at how to go a bit faster. So we're going to run along this back wall. We're going to flick to the back about to here about to 45 degrees. Click and jump and shoot and that's how we're going to start. So we're going to go along. And just flicking behind us that bit there so that's the main priority of off of the walls walls are better because you can shoot if you notice i'm shooting a little bit down to point myself into the ground to stop myself from going up into the air meaning it's longer before i can uh, bounce again and i have less control if i'm higher up in the air over what i'm doing because sometimes you may want to use the floor to get over stuff 
by shooting beneath you. Now you'll notice that there I'm not shooting straight down. So if I get up some good speed coming down here, get up and over this, and then we go about 2,500 shooting straight down. You see how it didn't really bounce me that high in the air? Well, if you instead shoot a little bit in front of you, you see how I didn't gain any speed, but also didn't lose any, and just went straight up in the air. That's a technique because of where the rockets spawn in Xenotic. They spawn kind of just in front of you. You have to shoot in front of you to have it shoot behind you while you're moving, if that makes uh, any sense. You do get the hang of it, and you get the hang of the exact timing of the rockets and where you've got to shoot them. But you can also do this if you're on the floor and you don't have a wall. You can just shoot the floor at the right angle. You won't go up in the air, uh, but you do have to be going a bit faster. You can do it behind you. And then gain some speed off of the walls. Then gain some speed off of the floor without going very high by shooting behind me or shooting straight down. So gaining speed while shooting off of the floor by shooting down without gaining too much height. So those are some of the basic elements. It is difficult. You will probably have to spectate other people to see exactly how they're doing it. I recommend turning on a long decal time so you see how mine aren't fading. So you'll be able to see where other people are shooting their rockets. You'll be able to see if they're coming out from here doing another one there then off of this wall or potentially if the best players are getting one shot there and then going straight into this wall, whether they're going over the top of this or round it, you'll be able to see where different players are shooting their rockets. So I'll leave that on the screen so you can copy it uh, for the decal fade time and hopefully that will be able to get you a little bit faster going with rockets. It does take time, it does take practice and it is very much something that is um, experience based. Okay, so here we are on XTWC 2023-5, the final map from 2023. Going to do a little bit of rocket stacking. So if we jump down here, we'll get a rocket launcher in midair. We can then try and blast ourselves across to the other side here. Trying to get just enough height to get up over this ledge. You see, it can be quite difficult to get the timing exactly as you land. However, if we pre-fire a rocket and get two rockets, so that one, this first one is exploding... As we get down to the bottom, we're able to use that to then do two rockets and get more speed, more height, and we should hopefully be able to get all the way up here with quite a lot of speed to continue. So it is all just about timing the rocket so that it lands at the same time you do and you go really high and really far. Uh, three rockets is possible on this map, but it is incredibly difficult to do, so I'm not going to attempt it. But you can also do that, and you definitely can get up. I was doing it just a minute ago. There we go. So yeah, you can do one rocket, or you can pre-fire one at the right timing to get two and go flying much faster. So double rocket stacks can be very useful, and in some maps they are in fact entirely required. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you've learned something, or at least found it entertaining. Uh, if you do want to learn more about Xenotic Defrag, go check out the XDF Academy. Ask players in game, spectate them, see what they're doing. And yeah, it's uh, a very, very good game. And there is some links in the description to various resources that you'll be able to use to improve. Thank you again for watching. And I will see you around on the server or on the world record streams, hopefully sometime in the future.